Good evening, everyone, and welcome in to the A&E Podcast. I am Andy Stowe, but as you can see, neither one of these guys is Eddie from Mackworth. Eddie is out doing some of that special ninja training stuff he does. Um, he does not tell us where he goes when he's doing it, so we have no idea. But he did text me, and he said his sensei is going to let him leave soon, so hopefully he will be joining us within a few minutes. But luckily for us, we do have two pinch hitters. We have the biggest Georgia basketball fan I've ever met in Garrett Key, and we have West Coast dog himself, James Carraway. Garrett, are you alive? Did you make it after um, a couple of days ago? Did so, yeah. Made it through it. Made it through it. So, um, like I said, it's kind of a as as we kind of talking about, and it came to an end. You know, I mean, it, was, it is what it is with that run. I mean, let's be honest though, that really wasn't a run that they probably should have been on because they really probably didn't have any business being in that nit tournament but yeah um it came to an end uh last was it wednesday tuesday night so 9 30 uh, p.m tip um they were the game after uh indiana state and uh utah indiana state took care of business and y'all know indiana state that's home larry bird uh they are basketball crazy fans up there that place was rocking um hinkle was just like i mean it was just all indiana state fans so it was gonna be a tough draw if the dogs did get past seat hall um, going toward playing tonight. Uh, they're actually playing right now. It's 24-22, but that was just going to be a really tough place if they did get to the championship because that those fans are just ridiculous and they're crazy for Indiana State basketball. Um, but now we're kind of in the waiting game. You know, we're we're at the end of the season. I was on the hoops board, like just refreshing, refreshing from because you want to see what's the portal. You know, what's going to happen? Right. You know, that's the big question for the Georgia fans. All right, who are we going to lose? What are we keeping? And I think there's a consensus right now. You got to keep three Blue Kane, Silas, and um, Dylan James. Those are your kind of core guys. Um, there's two that can't come back. Noah can't come back. She was out of eligibility. And then they have Melendez. They got um, Jabri, um, James Deloach, and M.A. Moncrief. Those are guys who are got a COVID year. I can't believe we still have COVID years going, but yeah, somehow we do, you know. Yeah. Uh, so um, they're the four guys that can come back. Um, Dash has basically kind of alluded for the past month that Jabri and RJ uh, are going to be gone. Um, everyone kind of – it seems like the writing was on the wall for Jabri that he uh, – I'm not going to say because I don't know the guy, but he, they're saying maybe just kind of checked out, you know, um, and maybe the ankle was just kind of the way to kind of get him. I'm not going to play that game or try to, but RJ's kind of been the biggest question mark. Um, reading more into it seems like maybe there was some playing time uh, issues, and he expressed that. Maybe Coach White didn't like that, and that's why you kind of slowly started to see RJ's minutes, like, go down. But that's been tough for Georgia basketball fans because he's been good. I mean, he's a good player. Um, he, he provides a lot. He's When he's on the court, he does some kind of crazy stuff, but – he, he's a pretty good, pretty good defender, and he can kind of make stuff happen. So that's going to be kind of a tough one this if he goes, but everyone's kind of expecting it. So, and at the end of the season, you kind of saw Blue and um, and Silas and uh, Dylan. They were starters. They were entrenched in the starting lineup. So maybe that hope you hope that can kind of help them um, get to the uh, finish line of next year. You know, but right. Yeah. Um, Dasher put out a tweet that Silas is um, – he, he's going to take some time away to think it out, and that kind of got people um, – you kind of get nervous about that, you know, when he when he's kind of saying that he's going to process everything. Um, Silas is from North Carolina, Blue's from Tennessee, so you'd have to think maybe those guys might get a run from the bigger schools, you know, the bigger quote-unquote basketball schools. But that's that's where we're at now. It's just a waiting game to kind of see what, what happens and who's going to – go where and what's the portal going to give it and what it's going to, what is what it going to take? It? Yeah. And that's the thing. It probably will. Uh, there's always going to be now in the portal. Well, um, it's just, you never know what you're going to get from day to day. Like, James, did you get to watch the game? What'd you think? How did, did, I mean, from what I saw, I only got to see bits and pieces of it. They're, they just got beat up there. There yeah. wasn't much going on. Yeah. yeah. Don't look- go ahead, James. As- I saw the score. I was watching the Vegas Golden Knights and I was like, I'm not turning this on. Um, but I'm still kind of curious, is, is this still like a success for, I, I guess, not an overall success on the season because we did make it to the NIT and I know everyone was very excited. And then what if we win the NIT next year? 
does that make that season a success or is the NIT only fun one time? I think you're at the point now where you, 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 the NIT next year is not going to cut it. Um, okay. You're you're kind of in the mode where you got to make the tournament. And you know, I hate putting stipulations on coaches, you know, like even football, bass, like you got to win this game, you got to get here. But Georgia's, I think, at the point now where an NIT, it wasn't, I think you can consider excess. It was, it's amazing how it evolved from like the end of the year where they were really doggone awful, you know, how they ended the season. They finished it just kind of like they did last year and then it, everything kind of fell into place with Ole Miss and and Miss and Texas A&M making the run getting into tournament open the door for Georgia and then they just made that run so I, I don't think if they're in that position next year you're, you're looking at it like you're you're maybe looking at it like oh this is kind of cool this is great because you, you got to start you got to start making making the dough next year like the donuts need to start getting made so to speak and you got to get right. Uh, and the good thing is we have a uh, certain young man will come in and talk and he will tell us how good the NIT, how good it was. There he is. Good Where's evening, that? boys. What's, What's up? up? How, how's everybody? Well, first of all, a Andy, where did the ninja stuff come from? Did you just, where, where did that come hey, from? You told me not to tell about all your secret stuff, so but I had to tell you were a ninja. So oh. yeah. Look, he trains MMA, boxing, kickboxing. He does some Brazilian jiu-jitsu. He's in the gym every day. Like he's, yeah. Don't don't make this guy mad. That's what. Mm -hmm. And apparently, he's looking for a new podcast partner. So it looks like I got fired. Well, <laughs> that is not what I was doing. So I was not with my <laughs> sensei in the dojo getting another belt. Okay, that is not what I was doing. I was attending to some personal family matters. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> so I'm glad to be here, James. Hope you're well. Garrett, good evening. Andy, hope you're doing well. And here's how it went down, boys. So Tuesday, I texted Andy and I said, hey, buddy, my flight gets back about nine o'clock on Thursday. There's no way I can come on the show on, on and we can't do the show Thursday. And this was Andy's response. I'm going to read it verbatim. OK, just, <laughs> just to make sure Andy gets this right. OK, we will postpone till next week. We can't do the show without Eddie from Ackworth because you are the E in A and E podcast. <laughs> That's the last text he sent me today on the plane. I see a tweet: that James and Garrett and Andy are now doing a podcast, and I'm trying to get home with my beautiful wife. Okay, so so my question is: is the is the show now A and G yeah. and J podcasting, or is it the other way around? Because I want to know what you are naming the new show. It's, it's definitely all show. We're the we're the we're the worst of the worst coming in well, here. Not so. according to this text and this tweet that I got from Andy. <laughs> he, he's moved on. So you know, I might just have to log off here and let y'all have a good evening. You take a week off. It's time to go. We we can't. We got to keep it moving. Unbelievable. Just Eddie, unbelievable. I was just worried you you left your family behind to run and get back on the show so you didn't get Wally pissed. And I was like, I hope everybody's okay over there. No, my wife and I arrived together, James, and okay. we actually we got lucky today. We were able to board a flight early. We were supposed to, literally supposed to arrive at like nine o'clock tonight, and we got to the airport earlier than we thought, and we landed a plane at like two o'clock, so it got us here much quicker. So. All good. We made it back. It was a whirlwind, but we're here. So um, good stuff. But um, well, we're glad yeah, you made I'm listening in the background, hearing a little bit about the NIT. And James, I think, is in my mode. What did it do? That's a great question um, because we've been asking that since the beginning, right? I I've been first and foremost saying yeah. that. What the hell does this do, right? And Garrett said, come on, man, get on board. It's the NIT. <laughs> we got to do something. And I understand to a point what he was saying. But I think James – what little I was listening to in the background makes a good point. Now that we've lost and got, you know what? I'll, I'll just say this real quick. That was the encapsulation of this season. What we yeah. ran out of gas, right? Yeah. I mean, we, we made a little run. We what, won 10 in a row early in the year. Everybody's all jacked up. And then we kind of hit the SEC and it and went downhill. Got on a little run in the NIT, beat some good teams, give them credit yeah. on the road. They did a great job and just got, humiliated by Seton Hall. And I think we ran out of gas because we're a young team. So really, that's my question. I'll throw it to you, James, first. Does this do anything for us next year? Or is this just now in the rear view window when we're moving on? I think it's in the rear view. I mean, I was looking up kind of TV ratings and I was like, who, who really was watching this? And you're sandwiched between men's, uh, the men's game and then Caitlin Clark. And it, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a tough draw to begin with. So I think it's fun. The players who played got good experience, but 
that's about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I think it's about experience for guys that hopefully will be back next year. More playing time, I figure. More shots, more practice. I think that's a good thing. I don't, I don't Garrett, think Garrett do you think it means head. anything for next year? I, I'm kind of with you all. I mean, it, it was a good run and everything, but it, would it have determined who might be going or staying? Like, if we were out after the S tournament, probably not. I mean, give them credit that they they – you could tell they wanted to be there. That was sure. like, no thing. doubt. Like, they no they doubt. show like that. That was a good thing to show. Like, hey, we we're not going to pack it up. But as of next year, no. I mean, probably you can't really say. Well, we made it to the NIT Final Four. It sets us up. I mean, it's as we we're saying. It, it's all about now. Like, you got to make the donuts, Mike White, and, and we got to. There, there's no more. I don't think like going to the NIT and the feel good of what this season was like. We got to make the tournament, you know. So I mean, it's, it's cut and dry. You right think now. this will help with potential transfers coming in? They'll say, "Hey, they made it to the NIT. That that's potentially better than what their school did." So, will this help with transfers, or is this just a, or is it basically NIL is going to be the reason you come or not? I think it's NIL. I think it's a huge part. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't think that. I don't think someone's going to look and say, "Hey, Georgia made it to the final four at NIT, and that's going to help get my decision further to committing or anything." I think you just got to hope that. NIL and um and you know I mean you're gonna compete with these other schools you know you I mean Eddie we were talking about um before you came in like you know Blue Cane from Tennessee Silas from North Carolina don't don't kid yourself I don't think those yeah. those cats are gonna start especially Silas you know hey, mm-hmm. hey kid you know I mean and let's well his see. tweet was kind of or not his yeah. tweet his comment was a little I, I don't know. Little you, you can read yeah. into whatever you want right but yeah. it was kind of it wasn't like I'm I'm back I'm a dog you know it did, certainly didn't say that but sure. you know. He's got a lot to think about. Well, I I guess my question, I'll throw it around to all you guys. What does next year for Mike White have to consist of to continue what he's doing? Does it, it, I'll just put it simply, is it the NCAAs or bust for this guy next year? Now his contract, his contract's one more year, Garrett. He's got through next year or is it two more? I can't remember. He has has, this year, I believe. Yeah, he has Um, next year and two after. Oh, yes. he's got three left. Yeah, okay. yeah, he still has three total. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. that doesn't mean crap. I mean, you can fire a no. coach sure. after you hire him in a contract. It doesn't matter. But does Josh Brooks look at this if we – let's just say we do not make the NCAAs and we make the NIT again. Is Mike White retained? Ooh. James, <laughs> is he, does he come back next year if it's just the NIT? Simple, I'm going to say yes. I don't think they have the guts to – the cut the cord on it yet. Why? Why, why do you why do you think that? Sorry, Andy. No, no, go ahead. I was just gonna say what if he doesn't make the NIT though? Then then I think at that point that's a disaster. And I really think it's on the trajectory of the team. Um yeah. no one cares about those first 10, you know, they're not playing real tough out of conference. But if you finish win a couple games in the SEC tournament, then they're like, hey, we got something to work with. But if you're bouncing yeah. in the SEC you don't make the NIT. You the fans, as much as it's you know, little brother to football, the fans won't stand for that. I don't think. So that sounds like NIT or bust. That's that's not what I wanted to hear. NIT or it, bust. Is that what it is here? Is I mean, it, uh, I don't is it know. NIT? It, it's tough. I mean that that it's a great question, Eddie, because it makes you. I mean, you got to think about it. I mean. Is the Georgia way, you know, we always hear about the Georgia way, you know, is it to do that type of thing? You know, I mean, Georgia's in all like sports, they not really are known for cutting, cutting the cord that quick, you know? So, I mean, but you know, what? can I stop you Garrett? There is no Georgia way when it comes to basketball. You're right. Good point. There is that you can't No, I mean, it's just a disaster and it has been, you know what I mean? I know what you're saying. We can't keep, right. keep firing coaches, firing coaches, firing coaches, right. but nothing has seemed to work. Right. And, and and by no means, I don't want people listening to think I want Mike White out of here. I mean, I, I like Mike White. I really like what he's done. I think he's a great coach. But, I mean, I think the rubber meets the road next year. It's it's The, the program goes one of two directions based on how we end up. And, and what's put in a more pressure on – more, like, pressure on the whole thing is you're seeing these SEC schools, they're, they're yeah. not getting any worse or getting yeah. better in getting basketball. Better. You know, that's the – you get – Auburn, Tennessee, South Carolina, Kentucky, Florida, they're not getting – like, this isn't the the SEC of Mark Fox. You know, this is a new – I mean, heck, you're having Alabama. I mean, gosh forbid, hopefully UConn takes care of them, but they're, they have a chance to win a national championship in basketball. I mean, this is that's the epitome of the football school. So that's what's made it even more difficult for 
Josh Brooks and puts a lot more pressure on the matter is you're having all these schools that are just becoming so much more successful so quickly, and you got to keep up with the Joneses a little bit, you know? Yeah. That's well, one thing point. is the coach that you have was at the Florida Gators, and they were down, and now they're back up. So that's one issue with it. But like Chris Taylor says, how does the Georgia football way impact the expectation level of the broader Georgia fan? So that's a really good question because and you were bringing up the, the border schools. When Georgia football was this level, I always said, look, I, I know it's almost impossible to get to what Alabama is with Nick Saban. That is the outlier. But why can't we be what Florida is? Why can't we be what Clemson is? Why can't Tennessee had won a national championship? Why Auburn had won a national championship? I'm like, if LSU is winning a lot, like if those schools around us are at that level, why can't we be there? I'm not saying we have to be Alabama, which who knows, maybe that's where we're going to be now. But I've always thought we could be as good as that next group of guys. So why, why can't we be South Carolina? Right, Why they can't came, we be so, that, they exactly. coming to basketball but this year, right? They Alabama. came from nowhere last year. Well, yeah, Alabama. I get, but Auburn. Alabama's always Alabama has always had a pretty good program. Yeah, you know, South Carolina just came from nowhere. They were terrible. I mean, yeah. the guy was going to be maybe canned or looked at, and then they had yeah, an incredible was, run this year. You know, so just give us one of those. I mean, just yeah. one, James. What do you think? I'll. You know, I kind of refined what I was thinking. We have to be in the graphic, whether it's the first four out at the very on selection Sunday. You need to see that picture of Georgia in the discussion for the yeah. NCAA tournament. That okay. is the bottom line, you know, bottom of the barrel expectation that needs to happen. Yeah, I, and I think they're I, – I don't see – I don't think Mike White's going to get fired next year unless it goes really far south, but – Things have happened. I just don't want next year to be the next Ant Man for Asa Newell comes in yeah. here. We get no bounce out of it. He goes to the NBA and balls out after one year because that's what's going to happen, right? We got to, yeah, when he's right. here, we've got to capitalize on his talent. And apparently, this kid is phenomenal, right? So, hey, you know, and my wife's like, are we going to get Bronny James on the transfer? Hey, maybe we, maybe we could. I don't know if the kid's that good, but that's a little juice in your program, right? LeBron's just, son. Just yeah. think what that would do. Who knows what it would do for wins and losses? I don't know. But could you imagine Marketing how right. packed that place yeah. would be? And if you see LeBron James' the son on billboards, on pamphlets, yeah. whatever, that would be ridiculous. Whatever. Yeah. You know, all news is good news, right? And we talk that's about right. it. Bad news is good news. Or I mean, I bad press is good press. It's press. As long as they're talking about you, that's all that matters. Yeah, exactly. that's what Greg Heller and Hart said. He said he liked booze or cheers. He didn't care as long as they're reacting. Yep. But yeah, that's that's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. I but James, um, are you like me, James? You watched barely any of that game. I mean, I watched a little bit of it, and I saw where it was going. I turned it off. I couldn't. I had a big hockey game to watch, so it. Yeah. I was watching the box score. Yeah. And if LeBron comes to the Is that the same game. night that Caitlin played? I can't remember. My nights are all running together. Did, was Caitlin on that night? They were Monday. No, that was the night prior. That was a Monday yeah, night. Yeah. Monday night. Yeah, because I watched yeah. every second of that. that was, oh, yeah. That was a great, yeah. She's, she, and, you know, that's a whole other thing we could talk about. But, I mean, this girl, Caitlin Clark, you know, not only does she have a phenomenal score, she passes the ball like Magic Johnson. That's what I that's what I love about her game. She makes everybody around her that much better. She's incredible with her floor vision. It's amazing. Is she going to Ice Cubes League? Is she going to play in the, the big three or whatever? She's committed to the W. Well, I mean, yeah, she's, she said she's going to the WNBA. But, okay. you know, that's a discussion I like to have with you guys. I know it's women's basketball. Nobody gives a shit. But it's it's interesting to talk about her. And Andy brought that up. So is it Ice Cube? He offered Ice Cube, three yeah, million dollars to play on this three-on-three -three tournament, which I think is all men. Is it, it not? Is. Okay. As far as I know, yeah. She she making that in the WNBA, maybe a million and a lot of endorsements. Three million dollars, and she could. I'd watch three-on-three -three just to see now, her play. Would you watch? You like, she, don't I have not seen her play that? at all this year. I've well, I've seen clips. But I've not watched the game. That's because you're she a sex and a massage. That's exactly what I am. So <laughs> thank you for pointing that out. Um, if um, lost my train of thought, sir. If if she it's plays, easy to do. I love doing that to you, Andy. It's yeah, fun. It's, if she plays in the big three, I'm watching that. I want to see how she does against the guys. Could you like that? Would be. Could you imagine the ratings for the big three and and her oh doing that? God. I'll do it. I mean, are y'all are y'all going to watch it? Like, what do you, I mean? Are you, James? Well, are you I just want to know what do you, James and Garrett, real quick, think she should do? She should go to the WNBA or take that deal. 
She's going to go the WNBA. Yeah. I think it's smart on Ice Cube. Puts word of mouth yeah. on his league, and she's not going to go there, but she will, you know, be an ambassador for it. And then yeah. she can also use that offer. Look, yeah. I'm getting five million to go do this. You guys need to pony up some money. So I think is really smart on all yeah. sides. Um, he gets the pl- pub. She's going to get the pub. But I mean, I watch anything she does. The product of that basketball game was better than any Georgia game I watched. It was. Top tier, great basketball. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yep. Have, have you watched her play, Garrett? Yeah, I have. I, I followed her all season. Um, okay. it, it, you know, it, it's just you, I followed the ain't like LSU. I mean, it, it's it. The women's game has changed, boys. I mean, it really has brought. I mean, inter- that Final Four is going to be packed. Um, I think I saw something where tickets are um, are more expensive than the men's Final the Four right now. The and men's, that's right. Kind of that's right. And it really has changed when. Um, you know, it used to just be UConn, Tennessee, and that was for yeah. like I think the lot in thirty. Uh, I was listening to Jeff Dancer's podcast. He was interviewing Mississippi State's uh, baseball play-by-play, and he does the bat- bas- women's basketball play-by-play. Mississippi State beat UConn, I think, in twenty sixteen, and he said that changed the whole game. It opened it up to now these other teams come in, and now you got these like teams that is you're it's not boring anymore, you know, and it's exciting basketball. And what Caitlin Clark and having that, you know, last year with Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, you know the ring and everything it just made yeah. it that much more oh, yeah entertaining well, that, that's a, let's not get too carried away though I, I i don't think this like it's just kind of like the soccer argument we always have yeah. in america every year you know here it comes soccer's out no right. the soccer's not nah. you know you've got superstars and when caitlin yeah. clark moves on angel reese moves on now, i'm not knocking the other players but they're at another level you know yeah. i just i don't know if it's sustainable because you know, beginning of the year, I wasn't watching women's basketball. I started hearing about Kaylin Clark, hearing it, hearing it. Okay, I need to watch it. I watched her. I was like, holy crap. And I started watching Iowa basketball because of her, right? So um, you got to have a superstar like that, you know, to sustain it. Generation. I'll say this. Why can't the men get four quarters like the women? I love the four quarter style. You do I like that? I do. I do. It, I do. It, it, I it is interesting. About years ago or that. Yeah, it's it's it's. Yeah, it's interesting seeing them go to that. I mean, it's it's a fairly new thing for the women's game going to quarters. Um, but I would think they would embrace that because that's a lot more commercials, is it not? You're getting a larger break there between the quarters. I know they have their it, their built in timeouts and stuff, but I think overall, I bet the women get more commercials out of it. I guess. Awesome. You know, I'll, I'll Andy, do that app for me, would you? Yeah, I'll look that up. I get that okay. team soon. Yeah. Too. Thanks. <laughs> well. Um, I do want to start talking. I want to talk about the Braves because they are one week into the season. But before we do that, I do want to mention the Georgia baseball team. So they're twenty three and six at this um, currently. They actually won. You know, they um, they beat Georgia State ten to one on Tuesday night. They took one of three from Tennessee, which is a good thing because, as y'all know, going on the road in the SEC is almost impossible to win. And they open up a series with Mississippi State, who is ranked number nineteen in the country right now. Um, what do they need to do? Is a one and two trip to um, to d- down there to play Mississippi State? Is that a good trip? I mean, is, if they go to Starkville and go one and th- one and two, is that a success? James, um, go ahead. Uh, I think they just have to play well. Don't get blown out any games. I would like to see the pitchers pitch better. That's always going to be Georgia's issue: is the pitching. Um, and the SEC is such a grind. I'm not going to sit here and say you have to win one, you have to win two, but be competitive in all three games and see some improvement from the pitching staff. Garrett, go ahead, Garrett. Yeah, I'm. I'm with you. Like, it's all about staying above water right now for them. Um, I think the old saying: don't get swept on the road and win your series at home if you can. In the SEC, yeah. win. the magic number to get into the tournament is 15 wins. 15, 15 right. you're in. So, like. Um, they Georgia had a, has a tough schedule right now. I mean, they played in Knoxville at Starkville, and they're after this Starkville, they get four out of six at home. So right. that's, that's, that's huge. You know, that's yeah. huge. So stay above water. Get a game if you can. If you get that's two, what, you I, bowl. I want so, one game. If they get one, I think. But if they can somehow pull off two or three, that's huge. That'd yeah. be that'd be massive. But yeah, pitching, and, and I, I think James nailed it too. It's it's the pitching. You know, I mean, we, these guys can hit. We know that, right? They can score runs like nobody's yeah. business. But it, it's the pitching, and I mean, who could have predicted we the first game against Tennessee? We run ruled their ass. I mean, that's yeah. that was unbelievable, right? Yeah. So really, that's a win right there. The, you, the other two, yeah, we, we lost, but hey, one of two against Tennessee, like we did, I'll take that all day long. So 
if you got to put a number in, Andy, don't get swept, right? Yeah, that's what I just want. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, Slade offers going back there. He played there for um, for the past two seasons. So that could be big for him. So you maybe there will be a little juice that, you know, they can come out. And like I said, if they can somehow pull out two, that would be massive. Well, I got I, I got to throw this in real quick. I got a guy that works for me who actually played college baseball at West Georgia. And um, he texted me. <laughs> he texted me Friday. And he's like, are you keeping up with Charlie Condon? I'm like, are you an idiot? I mean, come on. I watched Charlie every, I watched every game. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it, he doesn't give two craps about college baseball, certainly not Georgia baseball. And it's starting to catch people's eyes that this guy, Charlie Condon, is worth sitting down and watching a baseball game. And the next thing out of his mouth was, how the hell do you watch these games, right? And I had to explain ESPN Plus, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And that's the problem. Nobody can find the games, right? Or it's a pain in the ass to do so. But Charlie Condon is starting to get talk from people who do not care about college baseball. And maybe maybe he gets a little Caitlin Clark juice, right? Uh, with nice. college baseball. Yeah. Not, not to say Charlie's a woman, right? We're not going to go down that road. <laughs> In San Diego, people are noticing out here. I've been getting texts from my friends. Really? Yeah. That's good. Yeah, he's there. He's um, projected as high as third in the draft right now. So, like, there's he's well, he getting can, if, if, if he keeps this up, Andy, and he finishes, like, with an incredible – do you think he could go number one? No, you're shaking your head no? I don't think so. What I just said? No? James I said think, no. Yeah, I think Florida guys you know, go number one. So. But get the golden spikes and you're, you know, you're a top three pick. Yeah. I think they're going to take Florida player, but yeah, you know, um, he right now is hitting 481, 19 home runs. Caglione, is that who the Caglione? Yeah, guy? Caglione. Yeah. yeah, he's Jock Caglione. He's he, I mean, he's playing. Right. He's playing both sides of the. Uh, he's right. A pitcher he's, and he's, he's yeah. Yeah, he's next level. And of course, the pitcher. Um, can't remember his name from Wake Forest. He's you know he can throw 102. And he's I mean his stats are ridiculous, but um. But yeah, I think Charlie Condon, if he goes to his top three, that's going to be huge for the dogs for recruiting and hey, for him too. So, um, well, yeah, let's move over into the Atlanta Braves. They have started the year out three and two. Um, we've seen one full turn through the rotation. You know, that, that's a little questionable. Um, they open up a three game series tomorrow night with the Diamondbacks in Atlanta. After the first week, we got a pitching, the pitching numbers are. Um, we are right now in ERA. They are tenth with a three point twenty one ERA. They are twenty sixth in the league with forty six strikeouts, but they're seventh in the league with seventeen walks. If we would have said who the best starters of the week were going to be, we would all pick Charlie Morton and Ronaldo Lopez, right? <laughs> so, yeah. So, and, and Chris Sale and, and, and Spencer mm-hmm. Strider both look pretty good. Max Freed got torched. He was the shortest outing of his career, but that's one game. But so, Max Reed threw a strikeout. He did. He, he struck the batter second. out. Go ahead. He did. Bad. It was he bad. Did. Yeah, I was going to let you get that. But, yes, he struck the batter out. But, so, after the first week, Eddie, how are you feeling about the pitching rotation? And, you know, Aaron Bummer, he's gotten he's gotten hit hard, too. So, yeah. again, yeah. it's it's a couple of games. But how are you feeling after the first yeah. five minutes of the season? I mean, I, I, let's give Bummer a little time. I mean, you like you said, it's early. But, yeah, I mean, going into this season, y'all all had Ronaldo Lopez as pitching the most innings of all our starters, oh, yeah, right? Sure. Because he's got six, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, and right behind him was Charlie Morton. We all predicted that, right? Yeah. I mean, that that's just incredible to think about. But, um, you know, I, I, I just – that shows you how deep this team is, right? That Max Fried struggled a little bit. Strider, I'm not going to say he struggled. He looked great, but, you know – yeah, I mean, his the, the offense didn't help him very much. And, um, you know, it's just incredible to watch these guys play baseball. And, and by the way, I know we're going to go to the offensive side, but I'll just ask you guys, throw it out there. Most homers for the team. You know who's leading that? Ozzie, right? Ozzie. Wrong. Marcelo Zuna. That's three. right. Three. Yeah, three. Highest batting average. Who has the highest batting? I'm, I'm looking at it. So I, know. I know that. Um, nope. Wrong. I know Andy's looking at it. I'm James, looking at it. Nope. James, you know it? Paris. Jared Kelnick, 545. Who has the most hits on the team? Olsen. Wrong. Orlando Garcia. 
Oh no, RC. Oh, R- RC. Orlando. Yeah, Orlando. that's what I'm He's saying. It. Yeah. It, it, just just roll that around in your head for a second. The, the things we just went through. Nobody predicted any of that, especially Kelnick. I mean, we're all ready to cut him, right? Yeah. I mean, and he's he's really batting well. So I just love everything I'm seeing top to bottom. Yeah, I think um one, I think they're the best team. I still think they're the best team. But James, when you look at the pitching staff, do you see anything that you're like, oh crap, was that that shortest outing for Breed? Like, oh God. Or was it just one of those deals? I'm glad it happened to Max because no doubts. Any of us don't have any doubts. The guy's going right. to back. Um, just didn't have it. Um, Strider, I thought, was great, but he just – this happened last year too, that sixth, seventh inning. Yeah. Just too cute mm-hmm. with the off speed. And attack, guys, with your number one fastball, not the 96 one in the middle. If you're going to throw it down the middle, throw it 98. Or 98, yeah. He was dominant before that. I I – I think the team looks great. It sucks that that last game got rained out because they'd be four and two, and it just looks prettier. Yeah. Um, and then they played in like the worst condition. The it worst. Was, yeah. like, such a bummer to watch it. Like in yeah. guys in ski masks and everything. It's like what the hell is and like this? two people in the crowd too on top of yeah. that. Yeah. It's almost um, like they didn't even like you could see when they were swinging. They're like screw this. this sucks. Yeah. Like, they, they didn't want to be there. out of it. No. Garrett, the game got canceled. I'm happy because yes. it put Spencer Strider opening tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. So I'm, yeah. I'm good with it. Garrett, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of been a weird – it's been a good start, but it's just been kind of a weird start to see. I mean, you had, you know, Max give his worst outing of the season or his career, basically, and they won the game. And then that White Sox series was just really weird. You know, you had the, yeah. the, the first game they dominated, the second game – it rained out eight innings, then you had the th- third game snowed out, you know. So it's just, it's just kind of weird. But I really look at the schedule coming up, boys, and they, they got a good – I mean, you got the Diamondbacks coming in. You got four games with the Mets, and, yeah. I mean, the Mets are just in a – they're just like, oh. Oh, right now. So, like, I really think you're going to – you can see them start getting some separation in L East. And, I mean, if, if y'all even watch any of the in, – the they played a doubleheader against Detroit. There was yeah. nobody in those stands today. So no. they're – this is a big opportunity for the Braves. You're home, and I think we're about to roll. It's and a two man division. It is. Uh, Marlins and and Mets are so bad. God, just makes me want to cry. The Mets are bad. I know, it's, right? It's so sorry. <laughs> so, you know, can I, before we move on, Andy, I've got to ask you guys this question because this is driving me crazy. Well, first of all, the scheduling is a joke. Rob Manfred sucks. I don't know how much involved he is in the scheduling, but I mean, it is just you got. Two dome play teams playing in one dome. You can fix that right there. It's yeah. pretty obvious that the, the battery was 81 degrees. We could have had three games here. You're not going to have all the games on the road, but at least start the season in the South. You got a better chance of getting those games done. Hell, the White Sox didn't want to be playing in that crap. No, and I know man. they play in it, right? They didn't want to be out there. It's just Rob Manfred is awful, and everybody involved around him is awful. They just keep stepping on their own wee-wees, and it drives me crazy. The second thing, guys, when Max Freed threw that strike, that that may have been the worst call. Okay, y'all can see my box right here. Yes. That strike was at where my head is. That's where that strike was on the replay. It, it was, was not bad. even close. And it was a 3-2 count, if I'm not mistaken. It was. Right? So he walks. They end up winning the game, really, because – no, we won that Actually, game. It, it, that it was a game, game but, It didn't matter. Yeah. It well, didn't it cost you. I mean, it cost you the next day. Like, it, 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 get out of there. Maybe he gets three or four or five. More exactly. Minutes. It cost you some bullpen work you probably didn't need. Max may have stayed in the game longer. You're exactly right, Andy. But my God, I don't know if you guys watch tennis. I watch tennis because I'm a nerd. I play tennis. But they have figured this thing out. It takes five seconds to review a ball that is called oh, out. They show yeah. it on the screen. Boom, oh, cool. in or out. Why I know they're working on it in triple A, but good grief, get this thing up, have three replays a game where you can look at it. The guy taps his head, and I say, even wait until it's a third strike or a fourth ball, right? Wait until that point in the count and do this thing. It's atrocious that they're well, allowing this to continue. Eddie, why not robo umps? Why not just go to robo umps? Because if you have Balls and strikes called by – you look at when you're watching it on Fox or, or Valley Sports. They have the box up, and it shows pitch by pitch if it's a ball or strike. 
Why not just have that? Well, mm-hmm. I, the only thing I'll say to that is, and in, in, I'll go back to my tennis, right? They still have the people that call the lines, right? And for the most part, they get it right. But if it's a if it's a close call, you know, they can say, hey, review it, and they can look at it, and it literally takes five seconds. So I think you can still have the human element, but to miss a call that egregious needs to be looked at and overrule. James, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, they do that in the minor leagues. Um, yeah. And I think you get three. My only Is that how it works? Is- you get three? You now, get how does three. it work, James? You get three. If you if you miss the first one, do you lose it and you only get – no? It doesn't no, matter? Three and the but the batter gets to choose. So, you know, you may say someone, you know, I want Ronald Acuna to use my challenges um, and not someone else. But Wait, 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 wait. So only one batter can challenge? No, the batter makes the decision, not the manager. So Oh, know, I see what you're saying. Okay, you so any batter, eight. any batter makes the decision. Yeah, so you could have okay. your eighth batter, and you're going to tell them, don't challenge a 1-1 one, one count. Save it for the good ones. Sorry, right. my baby's screaming over here. That's okay. Um, no problem. But I think that's what they should do. I like the human element. Um, now what about the pitchers? The pitchers can challenge too, right? Same thing. Move. And they get the three. Pitchers. They get three as well, right? I think it's just you get three the entire game. Okay. Not 100%, okay. But right. I would like to see three from the offense, three from the pitching. I mean, they're shortening the game so much. Like, what's five seconds going to do? It's not going to cost anything. Right. Just don't leave it in the hands of Snit. This. My only concern with this team is snit challenging. Guy doesn't know when to challenge a call. <laughs> oh, hang on. Well, we'll go to that in a second. I, I, I say, he, did, he, didn't, he didn't raise any hell about that call or, that I saw. I mean, he should have been on the field kicking dirt like yeah, Billy Dan Martin. That, <laughs> that was that bad. So, they're, you know, they use robo-lumps in, in the minor leagues. They use it where it calls, where the computer calls balls and strikes, and it signals down the umpire, it signals it to them. So, they call it. So, there's no – there's no ball or strike with um, with the umpire's call. So why not just do that? So forgive my ignorance. Sorry, Gary. We'll bring you in in a second. There's an umpire behind the plate, and he's behind hearing plate, in his ear hearing. what to call? Yeah. So, yeah. And he's so if it's there. a ball strike. And, and so the, 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 throw, the thought process is if I'm, hit, if I'm batting and there's a strike three call and it's a robo up and I say that's a, that's a ball and they call it a strike, then you're out. So it's, it's like. They they can you can't argue with a robot, and it's and it's quick. I mean, it's not like it takes time, you know. So you see it on TV, you know, it's immediate, and so they get a signal. I don't know how the signal works, but it's ball strike. I don't know what it does in the ear, but it tells them ball or strike. Why not just do that? And then the umpire behind the plate or in the fields, they get to make the plays. You know, if there's a, a play at second base, play they call play. that. Yeah, and okay. that keeps the human element in there. But on a ball and strike, why have human element on ball and strike? Because that may have been the worst missed strike call I've ever seen. That was right down the middle of the play. And could have cost the Braves not only the game, but Max Freed's start. Yeah. yeah. And Garrett. tell me you wouldn't be excited. Sorry, Garrett. We, mm-hmm. we're, we passed it to you. Watching it on the big screen, the pitch coming in and whether it lands in the square or not like yeah. tennis, and the fans would go nuts. That would be yeah. an awesome part of the game. It would be so cool. No, I, you're right. I was thinking the same thing, James. Like, with the tennis, like, I watched tennis too, Eddie, and – when they do the the challenge and stuff, it's instant, and then you get the clapping and stuff. That ha- and it's kind of like it's yeah, kinda exciting, you know. And yeah, they, you're they, right. That's right. They, they do the clap and they put that thing on the score, and you and you know what it is, and in, in like ten five seconds. So you can't kid me that or tell me the MLB can't do something like that when it's showing the strike zone on the scoreboard or something, and then you're back to the pitching and the count still going, you know. So I, I'm with you. I mean it. it it sucked for Max. Now I don't think Max was gr- great, anyways. But uh, he was wild. You know, it certainly he didn't help, wild. and it just—I mean—that that, kind of was was the it, end of it. But it, it, it was frustrating, you know, when you see that. That was you know what I thought. I thought his moment was going to be when he kind of slipped and kind of caught his leg underneath him. I, I looked at my son. I said, "Okay, this is what he got stepped on in the World yeah. Series. He's going to come out and ball, and it didn't have." Well, I mean, forgive me. He did throw that strike, so maybe that was the moment, but. He, he didn't really do that. I, I was like, I was kind of disappointed in what he did after that. Yeah, he's probably, he, he was wild. That I was shocked at how wild he was, and that's what a couple of my friends were talking about. They were like, yeah, that sucks. He got screwed. But, yeah, he was – he did and not he's have a, he's a, and To me, he's a vet at this point. He shouldn't be nervous. Chris Sale, nervous. I get it. New team, wants to impress. Max Freed is beyond being nervous in those spots, I would think, right? 
Yeah, I, I, he, he should be. I mean, he's been yeah. starting opening day for the past three years. Yeah. So, and maybe he was pressing. Maybe he was, like, trying to show that he should have been the opening day starter. Who knows? But, Is the contract starting to weigh a little bit on his mind? He wants to show. Know. I know. don't know. But Nola got rocked, too. That I mean, he did. True, I, true. I don't remember anyone actually getting a hit off Vax. Is maybe soft contact. I just remember him walking everybody. No, yeah. walking everybody. Yeah. He wasn't yes. getting hit. I mean, he. I mean, I can get stats, but he only gave a few hits. I mean, he only gave up. You know, what was it? Three? How many runs did he give up? I can. Uh, Max Reed. He gave up. He gave up three three earned runs, and I mean, yeah. so he only gave up two hits. But that's yeah, the thing. But he had three walks. Yeah. That's the problem. I mean, he just couldn't throw a strike. So. Well, but, what about the pitch offense? count got really high really quick. That was all yeah. the other problem. Yeah. They were yeah. working. But we were talking about how the fun boys was it to see like I mean, those dudes were rock those fans were rocking that Friday. That I mean that Thursday, Friday. I mean, that was loud. And then when they made that, I mean, those dudes are like Florida Gators leaving Jacksonville. I mean, they got the hell out of Dodge, <laughs> you know, when yeah. they realized what was coming on. That was the most enjoyable part. Oh just seeing absolutely. them just shut up and just that was that was fun, you know. And it was also fun to see Orlando Arcia have a great series yes. with them because yeah. they they hate him and what he said about Harper last year and he, he had a great series he hit the ball really well he did. yeah, he was, yeah he that did. that whole thing with that I wish I wish Arcia would have tackled Bryce Harper when he came around from the base one because and I know we've talked about wanting a pitcher to ear hole him you know and I think Chris Sale is that guy he will do that but like why didn't why didn't Arcia say you know what screw this guy he's not gonna stare me down. Like so pull Andy, a free to pull a, Andy, who who was the catcher in that game? Was it Darno or was it Sean Murphy? And if we it doesn't talking, matter. You're in that about, moment, when that happened, when when Harper turned around and uh, looked at Arcia, do y'all remember was, who the catcher was? I would guess it would have been Travis Darno because he played a lot That's more. That's kind of what season, I thought but. too. So in my mind, it's not Arcia's place. It's not Austin Riley's place. It's the catcher when he comes home, like Where's McCann Brian did. Where's Brad McCann at? Exactly right. Just stand there, right? That's that's to me what should have happened. And then, really, the next pitch is an ear hole, and that's where okay. Chris Sale comes into play, right? Chris Sale is a bulldog. You can you can just see in his demeanor when he's pitching. I, I really I'm excited. For that that guy, that guy is a wisp. I mean, he. I thought Max Freed was skinny. That guy's six six, and he weighs like one fifty. It's I ridiculous. Think he weighs he looks unhealthy. Yeah, Once he, he does look he needs some healthy. I mean, my, he my Garrett, give him something. Come on, he needs some meat on his bones, right? He, we were, I would, I'd definitely give him some meat. Take it. <laughs> we were, we were watching, um, we were watching the game. It was, you know, that was on Easter when um, Chris Sells pitching, and um, and and my my family was here at my house, and my my brother in law's mom was here, and she was like, "Oh my God, how tall and skinny is that guy?" I was like, "He's like six 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 seven. He weighs one hundred and sixty five pounds." She was like. Is he healthy? I said he yeah. supposedly he is. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, that's one of the skinniest guys I've ever seen. But yeah. He can sling that ball. He's got that he can. almost Randy Johnson, herky jerky yes. type weird thing. God, it's I love watching him pitch. I've always liked yeah. him. And now that he's in Braves uniform, I love watching him. Well, pitch. he hides he was, the ball. They said it's really hard to pick up. I mean James, you can talk about that, but the way he delivers that ball, it's hard to pick up on how he delivers it, right? Especially as a lefty. I mean, he's coming across. Um mm -hmm. and I've I've listened to Trevor Plouffe talk about it. he goes, it's the hardest at bat you'll ever face. And especially these guys in the NL East who haven't seen him before. Yeah. It's just so difficult to pick up, and he's just so whippy. Um, with that movement, I, I was really encouraged with how he looked. Um, this that's such a tough at bat, especially those lefties, Bryce Harper. Yeah. That's yeah. who you need to get out, yeah, right? Chris, like I, I know Max Freed struggled a little, but and Aaron Bummer yeah. struggled. Um, this team, I'm um, um, Bill Shanks was talking about, it, and he said this is the best team he's seen come out of spring training probably ever for the Atlanta Braves. If Bill Shanks says that. I take his word for it. Bill Shanks knows the Atlanta Braves through and through, so that was that's impressive to say the least. Well, one we, we came out healthy of spring training. Yeah. We had almost zero issues, right, that I heard about, and two were deep. Yeah, very deep. Deep, you know. Yeah. I mean, especially in the pitching staff, you could go even back to AAA and say, okay, if we have a problem here, guys, we're loaded in AAA with pitching right now. Maybe not so much on infielders and outfielders, but trip pitching, my God. Yeah, Wascar Noah had a really, or I think yeah. it's Wascar Why Noah, whatever he said. He um he had a really good outing, four innings, I think, um, no runs and four Ks or something. Like Bill mm -hmm. talked about him mm -hmm. earlier. So yeah, they're mm -hmm. they're so deep. And um, 
I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited tomorrow. I, and, and I think this is going to be versus the Diamondbacks is going to be kind of a measuring stick. See what we got. See what they yeah, have. I think so too. Yeah, so I think it's going to be a heck of a series. Uh, we didn't even mention losing Murph. I mean, that's a yeah, big deal. But you that have so weird. You know, you it really Travis, was. And, I mean, thank God we have um, such a good backup catcher. That's a one everywhere else. And y'all yeah. remember in the off season, people were saying, "Oh, we need to trade Travis Darno because you yeah. got you got Sean Murphy." I'm like, "What are you talking about? Like, you why don't you well, if you remember Andy when he made that trade, everybody was like." What the hell is he Why? doing? We got a yeah. catcher. This is stupid as hell. I well, was I, said, one of the, I, oh, I raised my hand. I said 100%. the same thing. AA brilliance always. I mean, the guy just knows what he's doing. And I think a lot of that was because of the changes that were coming with the pitch clock and the throwing over and all those kinds oh, yeah. of rules. He took that in in mind, and that's why he took. And Sean Murphy's a beast. I can't wait to see him back. He's just awesome. Yeah, he's um, and they said so. He has he's on the ten day IL, and he they gave him a grade one oblique strain. So they said pretty much that was the best case scenario for yeah. that particular injury. So maybe he'll be back. I mean, I guess that was was that opening day. Um, it was. Yeah, I, it was. That, yeah, I think it was. So, I mean, you know, in theory, he could be back in six days. So yeah. This is Marsh Mutt says. You think we we could look into a uh, South Carolina top season more than once every 20 years. We we talked about that earlier, um, yeah. how we are trying to figure out why South Carolina can be really good at basketball. The but, guy you um, kicked off your podcast brought that up, actually. You remember? He, yeah, he got kicked off. Eddie sucks. Yeah. But um, ninja training or whatever. But um, we did talk about basketball earlier. So, yeah, you can go back and watch. We appreciate it. It's going to be posted. It'll be back on. It'll be on YouTube soon. Or it's actually, it'll be after as soon as we get done. Um, but guys, before we get out of here, there's really not a whole lot going on with the Atlanta Falcons. They did sign a cornerback today, but I think that's a backup move. I don't see anything. Um, yeah, that guy's been injured a lot, and I don't know if y'all pulled it. I looked at it. He's been. It seems like every other year he's had an injury or yeah. whatever. I mean, it's a body. I, I, that's yeah. Fine. I, yeah. Just the draft please, is for the love of God. Don't take a cornerback at eight, please. Yeah, the draft is three weeks from tonight, so they'll. Oh, is it really three, three weeks from tonight? Wow. Right. Yeah. So that'll we'll start getting some you know rumors and, and we had talked about that earlier. There are rumors with um, what the Falcons may or may not do. Who knows? No, does anybody know? I think people just tell them that you know just tell these reporters something just to put it out there to get people to listen and try to trick them. But um, well, guys, it's been fun. We um, want to thank everyone that's joined us tonight and is watching in. And if you watch us later, we appreciate it. Eddie, before we get out of here, you got any anything you want to want to say before we before we end the show? I'll end it like I always do, Andy. Go get your colonoscopy, go get your blood work, and give blood, please, for the love of God. It saves people's lives and could save yours. Save mine, save my wife's. Can't, can't think of another better way to end it. So for Garrett Key, James Carraway, and obviously Ninja Eddie, I'm Andy So, and we will see you guys next time. Go dogs and go Braves. Oh. <laughs>